Okie dokie. So we're up to lesson five, which means we are starting to fly through infinite series. Um, on today's show, Taylor polynomials in greater depth, because I don't want to just do polynomials. I want to go all the way through. I want to get series. I want to find patterns. I want to use infinite series and this Taylor polynomial process to help us approximate functions. So let's go with a definition right off the bat. I want to define what a MacLaurin series is. I want to let f be a function with derivatives of all orders. And what do I mean by derivatives of all orders? It means that if I want to find the 3 millionth derivative, I can do it throughout some open interval containing zero. Then the Maclaurin series generated by F is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared and so on such that the nth term is the nth derivative evaluated at 0 over n factorial times x to the n plus dot 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 period. If you're careful, you will notice that this is very similar to yesterday's process where the coefficient of the nth term is the nth derivative at our special place divided by n factorial. If you're careful, that's what you will notice. The only difference is because we're dealing with a series, we have something that never ends. It goes on forever. Yesterday, we would have stopped after plus blah, 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 x to the n. We would have stopped. That's a polynomial. But series just go on and on forever. So if you're asked to find a series, it's got to go on forever. If you're asked to find a polynomial, it has to stop. Find the fifth order Maclaurin polynomial for y equals sine 2x. Looking for a polynomial, so I'm looking for something that's going to stop. In fact, I know exactly where it's going to stop. And I know that because it's a Maclaurin polynomial, it is centered at x equals 0. We want the fifth order Taylor polynomial centered at x equals 0. Um, let's recall from yesterday. Sine x was approximately x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and we could go on, but we just want the fifth order. Well, if we know that, then shouldn't it be easy to find the sine of 2x? Shouldn't that be easy? I would imagine that that's just 2x minus 2x cubed over 3 factorial plus 2x to the 5th over 5 factorial. Wouldn't that be it? Now, we could go through the process we went through yesterday. We could take the first four or five derivatives of that thing, uh, use the chain rule a bunch of times, uh, evaluate it 0, write down the line, and then do nth derivative at 0 over n factorial, let that be a coefficient. We could do that, 
but I think this process is going to be a little bit easier, and I think you're going to be looking for shortcuts like that as we go on. All right? Uh, oh, if we simplify, sure we can simplify. That's 2x minus 8 sixths x cubed plus 32 over 120. I have no idea what 32 over 120 is. That's 8 30ths x to the fifth. Okay. So let's generalize a little bit further, because not everything is centered at zero. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to define a Taylor series for us. Let f be a function with derivatives of all orders. This is going to look really familiar throughout some open interval containing x equals a. Then the Taylor series generated by f at x equals a is it's going to look really similar to a Maclaurin series. Function at A, derivative at A over 1 factorial times x minus A. Second derivative at A over 2 factorial times x minus A squared. And so on, so that the nth derivative at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n is the nth term, and so on, period. That is the Taylor polynomial extended forever, thus it is a series. It's got the same rhythm. It's got the same rhythm. I'll show you how. Find the Taylor series generated by y equals e to the x at x equals 1. Here I am going to use our process from yesterday. We're going to take a look at e to the x and a bunch of its derivatives enough until there's a pattern. There's a pattern. And I want to evaluate each of those at the center of the series. And the center of the series appears to be 1. Right? So now I've got to put all of that together and get a Taylor polynomial. And it appears, well, I've got to get a Taylor series, which means I'm going to generate a polynomial, and then I'm going to put plus dot, 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 once I think I know the pattern. How does this go? First, we use the function at 1. Then, we use the derivative at 1 times x minus 1. Then, we use the second derivative at 1 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 squared. Then, we use the third derivative at 1 over 3 factorial times x minus 1 cubed. I think I've got the pattern. I think I've got the pattern. What is the nth term? Well, the nth term is going to use the nth derivative at 1 over n factorial times x minus 1 to the n, and then plus dot, dot, dot. So you, too, can generate these things. You, too, can generate these functions. If I ask you to generate a Taylor series centered at any particular value, you know how to generate all the blues, all the derivatives. All the red values are just those derivative values evaluated at the center of the series. 
and then we put them together using the process we've done before. Function value, first derivative times x minus a, second derivative over 2 factorial, x minus a squared, and then the nth derivative over n factorial times x minus a to the n, and so on. So, there are biggies. There are series that you have to know. You have to commit them to memory because they're going to come up over and over and over again. We use the geometric series for 1 over 1 minus x. That's 1 plus x plus x squared and so on. Nth term is x to the n. Uh, and this converges if the absolute value of x is less than 1, not otherwise. Uh, similarly, we have a series for 1 over 1 plus x, which looks very similar to it, because all we did was substitute negative x in place of positive x, and this again converges if absolute value of x is less than 1 and not otherwise. Uh, because we have this second line, we have this third line. Because the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x is ln of 1 plus x. So we just take antiderivatives term by term. So I suppose you don't need to know what this is. Because you could always generate it. Uh, this happens to converge if x is between negative 1 and 1, but it does converge at 1. Then there are other biggies, the ones that pop up all over the test. Sin x. Sin x is all your odd powers divided by your odd factorials in an alternating fashion. The nth term is negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. This converges for all real x. Converges all the time. Of course, where you have sine x, you have cosine x, and hopefully you recognized from yesterday that if I want the series for cosine x, I just take the derivative of the series for sine x. And if you take the derivative of a bunch of odd powers, you get a bunch of even powers. You get the even powers over their factorials such that the nth term is negative 1 to the n x to the 2n over 2n factorial, and that converges for all real x. That'll work for any x you like. e to the x e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on so that the nth term is x to the n over n factorial and that converges for all real x. And then the one that rarely ever shows up on an exam but they say that it's required is the inverse tan and inverse tan is x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 and so on so that the nth term is negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 and so on but that only converges if the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. So these are things that must be known. I can ask you for them at any time. At any time. I can decide I want to know what those are. They can pop up on a quiz. They can pop up on a test. So there. Uh, don't worry about having to memorize them right away, but start memorizing them because we're going to play with them an awful lot and they're going to get into your brains that way and I'm very glad to do it. We'll see you tomorrow.